Hello, everyone. Our presentation today will highlight a collaborated effort between Exact Science and Epsilon on how we went about selecting the cycle platform to enable the consolidation of content across both Exact Science different brands and business units. Before we jump into the main topic, let us quickly introduce ourselves. Well, my name is Kenneth Walkage, and I'm a senior vice president in the digital solutions or we refer to it as DX, a group at Epsilon. I have over 23 years of experience in the tech, digital, and data world, and I'm familiar with multiple industry verticals. Although for the last 12 years, I've been focused mainly around healthcare and pharma, which has given me an appreciation of how evolved this industry has been in how they deal with digital. I'll pass it over to Rick to introduce himself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rick Cederholm. I am currently a senior manager of IT business solutions for Exact Sciences. Um, I have over 15 years of de delivering web-based technology and analytics solutions uh, within the healthcare, telecommunications, and uh, financial services sector. Um, over the last year, my primary focus at Exact Sciences um, has been the transition to our Sitecore Managed Cloud platform uh, for several of our product and corporate websites. Thank you, Rick. Um, we're going to now go into what I find is the most exciting part of all this. Um, we have a short agenda because we want to really target what exactly Cycle was able to do for this collaboration between both of our groups. Our agenda is going to start with just level setting with what the expectation is in the industry, especially around customer experience. Then we're going to talk about the challenge and the need we saw in exact size. And then we're going to jump into how Epsilon was able to partner with exact science to solve that need and the challenge. And then we're going to end with the results and the key learns we got from this whole process. So talking about the industry expectations. It's obvious that this slide shows a lot of numbers. We could go into numbers and I'm sure there are many more impressive numbers that talk about how customer experience is really has really evolved and it's a success variable for most companies. But when I see uh, quotes that says two thirds of companies compete on customer experience and that's up 36%, in the last 11 years, that tells me that customer experience is here to stay. Companies are not just differentiated by customer experience. They don't just build loyalty, but it actually impacts their bottom line. When you see 86% of buyers, we're not talking about um, pharma or looking up information. You're talking about people actually purchasing. 86% are willing to pay more for a great customer experience than a one that doesn't, that tells me that we need to always make sure customer experience is top of mind in any initiative, any campaign, any, any initiative we put out there. What does this mean? It means customer experience is the marketing currency. Yes, services are great and they're differentiators. Products are what differentiates one um, a brand from the other, but customer experience, when it comes to building awareness, building loyalty, customer experience is top of mind. And with that being said, this whole exercise was really targeted and focused around customer experience. We're not going to go into the challenge and the need and who better to speak to that apart from the client. So Rick, feel free to take it on. Sure. Um, so, to help better understand the challenges we are facing, I think it's it, it's good for me to give just a quick brief um, overview of who Exact Sciences is. Um, exact Sciences is a leading uh, advanced cancer screening and diagnostic uh, test company. Um, most of you might know of Exact Sciences by one of our products called uh, Cologuard, uh, which is a non-invasive screening test for colon cancer. Uh, we have a lot of advertisements on TV and so forth. Um, so uh, that's where you mainly might know us as a company. Um, over the last 10 years, we've seen some e uh, exponential growth, and, and that's been especially since the FDA approved Colgard in the summer of 2014. Um, in addition to the growth attributed to Colgard, um, we've ha have also had a number of uh, 
acquired a number of other cancer diagnostic companies over the last several years. So uh, on this slide, you'll see that uh, from a company size perspective, uh, we now have approximately 5,500 uh, employees around the world. Um, I mention this growth mainly because, again, it points to how we have uh, quickly moved from being a smaller, I'd say, one product startup type company to a very complex multinational company that now has many cancer diagnostic products that require uh, more advanced digital integration and, and enterprise-wide digital communication needs. So um, I'll move on to the next slide that'll outline some of the challenges that we were facing uh, or that we were working to overcome with our move to uh, Sitecore Managed Cloud. Uh, so as you can see on this slide, um, this slide outlines some of the challenges we were facing prior to our move to Sitecore Managed Cloud. Um, one, we were you know, managing websites on different platforms with uh, no enterprise or unified structure scale. Uh, again, mainly because we were acquiring a number of companies and so forth. Uh, each website was created separately by different teams using different frameworks. Uh, sites had inconsistent design, a different user experience and lacked common uh, layout designs. Uh, fourthly, uh, we continue to have reliance on external vendors for such things as, uh, you know, doing basic website content updates. Uh, so we didn't have uh, as much of the internal uh, uh, resources and skills to, to do that um, across the various uh, platforms that we were using. Uh, and then finally, we created, you know, it created challenges when attempting to aggregate data and to create uh, an omni-channel view of our various prospects and customers. Uh, so if we move on to the next slide. Um, so with those challenges outlined, we at Exact Sciences created a long-term goal to do the following. First, we wanted to better organize how our content was stored, formatted, and displayed. Uh, secondly, we wanted to, you know, overall just basically improve our digital customer experience, uh, enable the right experience for them. Uh, third, we uh, wanted to create a more personalized experience for our customer segments, whether that be prospects, patients, providers. Uh, we define uh, basically customers in many different ways. Uh, and fourth, we wanted to capture more relevant and rich customer engagement analytics to better uh, enable our omni-channel marketing efforts. So on our journey, uh, for, well, with Sitecore, which basically started about a year ago. Um, when we started this journey, we, we, we wanted to work with Epsilon to ensure that we would uh, take a components library approach. Um, so this is because we want, you know, we had many websites to migrate, many websites to migrate, and uh, we wanted to ensure that each migration phase would build on top of the other. So uh, this would allow us to leverage the components that were built in prior phases and so forth. Um, to explain how we did that and why we did that, uh, I'll turn it over to Ken and talk to talk about the solution delivered. Thank you, Rick. Um, and Rick was literally there from the beginning when we started this whole process. So if there's anyone that could speak to the challenge and the need, Rick was definitely is definitely one of those folks. Um, before I jump into our solution, um, I wanna go through who Epsilon is and why our approach is the way it is. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of you have heard of Epsilon, but we truly are one of the industry leaders in outcome-based marketing. I also refer to that as data-driven marketing. Not only do we have our different products, but we have data, like we have one of the largest consumer databases um, that holds consumer data beyond just pharma or beyond just healthcare. It really talks about lifestyle. Plus, we have solutions out there that drives around identity, especially in this industry where you, you have the impending uh, deprecation of third-party cookies. This is one of the leading technology solutions um, that you will see if you go into the research. Um, regard, apart from just knowing your customers and identifying it, we have capabilities around digital media 
targeting and activating. And then one of our major strengths is in the email platform providing space, as well as loyalty. We have a lot of third party accolades. Uh, Forrester is named as the leader in this environment. The reason why I'm going through that, obviously is not just to talk about our creds. <laughs> the reason is because we don't approach digital from an omni-channel, I mean, from a single channel or to talk about website. As much as exact science had websites they were trying to move into a more mature system, we approached it by saying, what is the customer experience and how does the digital platform you pull together create that customer experience across an omni-channel journey, not just website? That means when Exact Science engaged us. We started from understanding their vision and their views and their long-term goals around the customer, their experience, the message or the content at the touch point. What does that look like? That looks like what is the content comprised of? What is the strategy? What are the drivers? And what is that experience, not just in the web, but what is that experience across your omnichannel journey and how is that experience orchestrated with data driving it? When we approach this, we approach it truly from a holistic perspective. And we did it in a three phase approach. It was evaluating, like I said, the customer experience, the strategy, the business imperatives, looking at the designs of what's in place and what's to come and what are the art of the possible, and then understanding the implementation goals, both from an infrastructure, from a people process and platform perspective. Now, I, if I go back to what Rick just said a few slides ago, when he talked about the long-term vision, the long-term vision, if you think about it, was a four part series. It was trying to understand the right content, how to format and how to stage it, trying to improve on the digital experience, not just the web experience, trying to understand how to personalize and how to react to the customers in the different audience models they had and collecting the right data signals and integrating it correctly. What does that look like? That looks like Cycle version 10. It was an easy sell in, not selling because we were trying to sell them, but even they came to us saying cycle looks like a good candidate. And what we did was validate that. And beyond that, if you remember the other need that exact science had was to stand up sites one after the other very quickly. In fact, later on, you're gonna see the numbers of how many sites that were stood up. Because we had a very fast return that needed to be executed, we now decided that the Psycho Experience Accelerator or SXA using the Helios architecture could help us start and run as quick as possible. What does that look like? That looks like when we put together the architecture, when we put together requirements, we didn't just do it on one site. We looked over the all the different sites and then looked over the other sites that might be coming through. And our planning, our designs really took into account how to set up an enterprise content framework that was going to evolve and grow with each site that came in. That allowed us to build this in a very concise and efficient way. Again, using SXA, the ladder was already there. We just had to run up the ladder very quickly. And this is one of the things that Rick is gonna show you in the next couple of slides, um, how it impacted the results of how we were able to get a lot done at the same time and in a short order of time as well. So with that being said, Rick, do you wanna walk through the results at Key Learns again? When we talk about this, this is what the client saw. So I always love it when Rick literally speaks to this. He knows, he sees more about it than I do sometimes. Sure, thanks, Ken. Um, so yeah, if we move to the next slide. Um, over the last year, we've completed uh, three large scale website migration projects or phases, I guess you could say. Um, and as you can see by the slide, you know, total number of websites was about um, 15 websites. Now, as, as, as you all know, not all websites are created equal. So some sites are a lot more complex than others. So um, our initial phase uh, included uh, some of our more, I'd say, simplistic uh, brochure type websites. Um, so during this phase, it was, it was five websites. Um, uh, we needed to build out our cloud um, 
and infrastructure teams along with migrating those websites. So overall, again, we had about five, we have five websites, took about a five month period of time. Total page build out was probably maybe, I don't know, 150-ish type of web, web pages and so forth. Uh, phase two, uh, we, we needed to move some of our corporate uh, websites. Um, so uh, they were a lot more complex. Um, and one of the sites, in fact, had over 550 pages uh, just because it had been in existence for over 10 years and included a lot of like, you know, newsroom or press releases and things like that. Uh, so we had to move all that over um, as, you know, kind of a lift and shift. Um, and we completed those migrations of those five websites in a, in a span of a three month period of time. So as you can see, um, same number of websites technically, but um, a much more complex number of websites as well as uh, larger websites and short period of time. Uh, and that kind of uh, gets back to, you know, some of the using the components and so forth that we uh, approach that we had uh, moved forward with that allowed us to, uh, to do that, at least for phase two. Um, uh, we just finished phase three uh, within the past week. Um, and, uh, you know, again, we continue to, to realize some similar gains, uh, again, in five websites, complex websites, multilingual and so forth. Uh, and again, we're able to uh, migrate the, those websites in, in a three month period of time. Um, so, and then we have phase four that's going to be scheduled. Uh, that is actually, it's, it is scheduled. It's going to be starting uh, fairly soon. Um, along with those website migrations, we will also be able to work with Epsilon to uh, build a content authoring guide and training guide for um, our internal users. Uh, again, trying to move towards self-reliance and so forth. Uh, and then we were also, again, using the, the you know, building out the component libraries. Um, we were able to build kind of like a, a catalog, I guess you could say, of component libraries uh, and build a microsite. So uh, we do a lot of work with brand agencies and so forth. So they want to know, hey, we're styling a new website. How do we, you know, what kind of guardrails do you have or ways, uh, designs do you have? We had this component library micro site that we could uh, point them to, to uh, provide those, so to speak, guardrails for our creative agencies. So if we move to the next slide, um, one, um, oh, there you go. I'll turn it over to Ken. Sorry there. No, no, no. Thank you, Rick. Um, uh, and. I, I do want to echo what Rick said, and it's not always obvious because we see numbers and we forget behind the numbers, you see five websites, five websites, the phase four is 15 websites. Uh, those numbers are because, first of all, these sites have been in market for years. That's the first thing. Second of all, in pharma, which you all, a lot of you are aware of, those websites have been approved by a very strict MLR process. At times, it's much harder to build approved sites that are already in market versus starting from scratch because when you migrate it, it has to be migrated pixel for pixel, experience for experience because it has been approved and it cannot change. The reason why I say that is because in doing this migration, it's not just a matter of hit the ground running. You have to be precise, you have to be targeted, and you have to be consistent. And of course, working with Rick and his team, we're able to do that in a collaborative environment. Now, I do want to talk about this for a second, moving beyond just website migration. If you're going to invest in something like Cycle, it isn't just building websites, right? We've already started, in fact, is already scheduled to do start doing A-B testing with the customer experience team. That project is already underway because they know, they realize that the first phase was staging the site into a more mature environment like Cycle, but immediately it was staged. The next thing is to take advantage of the capability abilities that Sitecore gives to you. Another aspect, remember, we talked about personalization, personalization based on the different audience groups. Well, the marketing team has already started leveraging that. The, I think the build is about to start. And before the end of year, they are going to start having personalization. Again, the focus was always staging 
but then start leveraging Sitecore's um, core, uh, core capability. And then the third piece, again, this is not an exhaustive list. This is those things that are immediate and already in the horizon, is to leverage Sitecore in the journey orchestration and activation that, they are, that has a bigger initiative. Again, we are looking at Sitecore really driving digital experience. Starts with web, but it's gonna go beyond the web. So what does that mean, right, from a result? Again, I'm going to move over to Rick because he saw and he actually worked with these results. Rick? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Ken. Um, so basically, you know, what did we learn through our partnership with Epsilon and throughout the engagement over the past year? Um, so first point is over time, Exact Sciences has been able to build out our internal, internal knowledge of uh site core development and is able to increase our ownership of uh, our enterprise site core experience platform. So uh, that's been a huge win for us. Um, secondly, uh, because we are leveraging a unified content management uh, system platform, uh, we now uh, we have now generated efficiencies in development through the uh, reuse of components and styles and themes. Uh, and the, again, this has allowed us to develop new sites across our enterprise more efficiently and much more quickly. Uh, third, uh, the Sitecore Managed Cloud um, has uh, ensured high reliability and uh, has allowed for more scalability and agility uh, as our business has changed and grown uh, over the last year. Um, fourth, uh, takeaway or learning. Uh, one key aspect that we at Exact needed to overcome, as mentioned a couple times, is we did not have a deep internal development team uh, to manage our own sites and, and environments. Again, stems from the, us grow, starting as a smaller company, we outsourced a lot of stuff. Uh, now we're a large company and we're trying to, to bring in some of this stuff internally. Um, so we needed a path uh, towards self-sufficiency and our partnerships uh, with Epsilon has helped us build it out this internal site core development team over time. Uh, so we are able to better manage our enti entire web uh, presence um, uh, with our internal teams. Uh, one thing I want to point out is a challenge, you know, in any learning, there's there, there's positives and, and then there's also some challenges. And, and I would say just one of the challenges worth noting is uh, to be prepared uh, for the, the initial cost. Um, uh, that is, you know, one needs to be clear up front uh, the cost to build out the infrastructure and uh, create a clear roadmap for the migration of, of websites over, you know, a 6, 12, 18 month period of time. Um, as Ken mentioned, uh, many of these sites uh, had been built over a five, six year year period of time. And, and here we are rebuilding those, basically those websites in a one year period of time. Um, and so I, I mentioned that because, you know, to migrate all the sites to a new platform in one year um, will take a bit of upfront investment. Uh, it, it needs to be a plan for accordingly, but long-term, um, once they're all on one platform, you can be supporting that um, those websites uh, using uh, you know a common IT team and so forth. Great, thanks, Rick. So it comes down to this: um, Cycle was the right solution. Um, we're having fun with Exact Science, and there's still a lot more to do. Like you saw, we still have 15 websites to, to get done in phase four. So it's not yet done, and we just we keep on building new components, and we're really excited to see where the next set of projects can take us to. And with that, I want to say thank you so much.